They stuck into the kitchen when no one was looking. Look out, Mama, it's Danger Man cooking. So Smoky House Center is where we are right now, looking around us, it's our gardens, our farm. Um, this is the center where our programs originate. Each day the kids come here and they're working on the farm. Our principal job right now is raising vegetables. And the kids who are working with us are kids who I've hired, they're youth workers. And this is the youth work program. I'm the coordinator of the youth work program. I've been here for a long time, about 20 years. Um, I recruit kids from local schools, so a lot of my kids come from all over Rutland County, and I put them all together on crews, and you'll see some color-coded kids today. We have an orange crew, a yellow crew, a blue crew. Helps us distinguish the kids and also gives them some identity. What I look for when I'm working with these kids is helping them gain some work skills um, through these jobs that we've got right here. Um, I like to see them develop as individuals, um, learn some some skills that will help them be successful in a job in the future, uh, learn some academic skills. Um, we torture them with a little bit of school work even in the summertime. So today we'll be walking around and seeing them harvest um, the vegetables, maybe looking at a few of the other projects we have in the neighborhood. My name is Sue Cat, and I'm one of the farm managers here at Smoky House Center. We have about two acres in organic vegetables and we have an acre of organic blueberries. Um, we're actually a certified organic farm. We've got mixed vegetables. Uh, the two acres, um, we grow probably 30 different vegetables and those we sell in a couple different ways. We have a CSA, which stands for Community Supported Agriculture. We have about 50 families that pay us up front at the beginning of the year and um, then they get a box of mixed vegetables um, every week, whatever is ready in the garden. And then we also go to a couple farmers markets. We go to the Rutland Farmers Market on Saturdays and the Dorset Farmers Market on Sundays. Because we're certified organic, we um, really rely a lot on using compost to improve the quality of our soil. Uh, we don't really use fertilizers, mainly we use um, techniques to improve our soil. And so we do a lot of composting here. And we've got animals on the farm. We've got cows and sheep and pigs and chickens and turkeys. And so we do a lot of composting of the manure mixed with, um, with some of the hay. Um, it's raining a little bit right now and some of our, our hay is getting rained on and so that's going to turn into compost as well. Um, and then also just various um, other organic matter, vegetable scraps and that sort of thing. So we've got some really big windrow um, compost piles and then we add that to the gardens on a yearly basis and that keeps the soil nutrients up. We also um, do a lot of cover cropping. Um, we keep part of our gardens fallow every year um, do a rotation of cover cropping and run poultry through it um, and that way we're, um, we're also helping to keep the organic matter and the nutrient content of the soil up. We start our harvesting and delivering in late May um, usually with a lot of greens. We've got spinach, lettuce, um, this year we overwintered some scallions, radishes and then as we, um, we're, we get into June and July we start getting in some of the root crops, your beets and carrots. Uh, summer squash. We've got beans and peas coming in really well right now. Um, a lot of herbs. We like to include um, herbs in the boxes. So we've got rosemary and dill and basil and thyme and cilantro. Um, and then now here we are at kind of late July and we're coming into our summer crops. Things like the tomatoes are coming in, um, the peppers. We've got some melons that are ripening up this year. We're really pleased about that. I think we're going to get some good cantaloupe and watermelon. We've got sweet corn, that should be coming in in a couple weeks. Um, and then toward the tail end of the season, we really start going into the more kind of storage, you know, fall crops. We've got potatoes and winter squash and um, pumpkins and those sorts of things. So we try to grow a wide variety so that we have, you know, um, a harvest that lasts from May until October. Hello and welcome to Danger Men Cooking. My name is Gary Schmidt. And I'm Steven Schlissel. Today we're at Smoky House Center in Danby, Vermont, where we have a very special show. We're going to be here the whole day and do a cook-up with these, with the Lime Group and Nate. And all right. Gary's going to be cooking all sorts of salads, veggies, and some 
hamburgers and some chicken. Before we get started though, I'd like, like to uh, get a little interview with some of the participants. Sir. Morning. What? Yes. Oh, my name is Zach. Zach? And Zach, what do you like about cooking? It's fun. It's fun. It is fun. My name's Josh. Josh? You like to eat? Yeah. What's your favorite food? Coconut. Coconut. Do we have any coconuts here? Unfortunately, the we're seated. Yeah. No coconuts. All right. And we have here. Quinley. 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 And I like to eat food and I like to cook. I like to eat food and she likes to cook. My name's Cassie and the most I like about cooking is it's creative and fun. Creative and fun. And last but not least, Hiding behind the broccoli box. Um, my name's Kiaran, and um, the thing I like about cooking is you can create things that no one's created before, and it's really easy to do that. Very good. That's exactly right. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to now look at all the vegetables that we have here and get rolling with our food. And uh, so let's get rolling. We're going to make some burgers. And now we've got some chicken, potatoes, so potato salad, how does that sound? Potato salad, we're going to have a, uh, we brought some pasta, so we'll make a pasta salad, all right. Did I hear somebody say they want to do uh, a cabbage salad? Did, who said that? Did you say that? Okay. Uh, coleslaw? Something like that? Yeah. Pasta and potato, right? And then we have a bunch of fresh vegetables, so uh, in lieu of the green salad, we'll just do a veggie salad, all right? And then finally, oh boy, we have a lot of work to do. We're gonna do a blue berry cobbler. One of the first things we have to figure out, we're gonna be feeding like, 40 people at least. So we have to really plan out what we've got to do. It's 9.30 and we have to really be finished by 11.30, quarter to 12 at the latest, right? So what we have to do is figure out what's gonna take the longest time to cook. Let's say potato salad, right, potatoes are hard. So let's get started first on the potato salad. All right, because we got to get them cooked, and then while they're cooking, then we'll move on to something else. So we want to make sure that we keep our hands clean when we're touching food that um, later <clears throat> that's uh, not going to be cooked, like the veggie salad. Okay. So, so we're going to rinse off the potato, and then just cut it into a little smaller piece so it'll cook faster. When you're cooking a big batch of food like this, you want to make sure that things are kind of the same size. Because if you're going to boil, this one is going to get done before this one, right? So let's cut this up a little bit. Now when we're figuring out how many potatoes we need, a potato like this will be enough probably for one person. So when you're cutting, instead of trying to, you know, don't lay your fingers flat like this because, whoa, you're going to get them. But that's what fingernails are for, you know. So, but try to keep your knuckles curled and then yeah that looks good yeah so now we got to wait for those potatoes to cook they can't overcook they have to be just right so that when we cut them they stay in shape all right so we're going to do cabbage salad first thing we're going to do is cut this guy in half and inside is called the core the core of the cabbage so we would and normally that's pretty tough. So most of the time we take that out. And that can go into the compost. So we want to take the cabbage and what you're going to try to do with the knife is shave it as thin as possible. All right? Just do it as thin as you can. Do you all like to cook with your parents much? Do they, yeah. do they help you cooking? That's good. That's a good family project. But we're going to put a little salt in here. 
and you're just going to sprinkle enough to cover the top nicely. And then what I want you to do is just turn that around gently, okay? Mix it up, Chris. Okay. <laughs> what we're going to do is just let this set, okay? And the salt is going to draw out the moisture from the cabbage and it's going to soften it up. So once this gets softened up, uh, take about maybe a half hour or so, and then we'll come back and finish this up. Do we have a, a broom? Yeah. A broom. What I want you to do with the broccoli is to uh, take your knife, or you don't have to use the knife if you don't wish, uh, and we want to pull it apart and make it into nice small little pieces. Something that you, you know, when you're cooking and what you have to think about is eating it, right? So when you go to some place and, uh, like, and you're gonna have a vegetable salad, you wanna have some pieces that are nice and tender and small, right? Something that's gonna be easy to put into your mouth. So you could trim, trim the little nips on the end or, and make it maybe even a little smaller like that. That would be nice. Something like that's good. But take the hard part that people really don't like to eat off, okay? And just make them into nice bite-sized pieces. Okay, carrots. We're going to peel the carrots, all right? Grab it on the top end and then you go down halfway from the halfway and then turn the carrot, put the other end in your hand, turn it around, and then do the same thing like that. Okay? Oh, look at that. That would be a tough one to peel. And take, your, take a carrot that's been peeled and hold it over the bowl, and we're going to cut these into little bite-sized pieces. Watch your fingers. Take this bowl over to that other pot and we're going to drop this into the water just to parboil them. Cook them just enough to soften them up a little bit. Next step, we have green beans. Oh my god. Okay, so all we want to do is take the top off. All right, we don't have to take the bottom, but if you wish, you can. All right, so we're just going to clean up both ends. You don't need a knife, just pick it off with your, your hand. Here's the bean bowl. <laughs> we're going to uh, pop them in the water here also. Now, the next thing we're going to do with the squash is lay it on the table and we're going to cut it right down the middle. Okay, try that. Right down the middle. Be careful, take your time with the knife. There's no hurry. It's all right, if it's not exactly, it's no big deal. All right, and then we're just gonna make nice little wedges. Thin, thin, thin wedges, okay? Make sure our potatoes are not overcooking. They're looking good. Eggs. Some farm fresh eggs just delivered? Farm fresh eggs, all right. Hard boiled in any salad or something? Oh, yeah. Oh. Potato salad. Okay, why don't you throw some right in with the potatoes? All right. I'm gonna take this and pop it into the pot with the green beans. So what we're doing over here is parboiling. Like I said, parboiling all the vegetables, getting them a little soft, and then we're gonna split them up between the pasta salad and the vegetarian salad. So our next step. Dessert. Dessert. Dessert, we're gonna make a blueberry cobbler. Oh, yeah. Look at these <laughs> fabulous blueberries. Pick you picked those? Pick oh my gosh. Yeah. Like the size of grapefruits. And, but we did pick all these by hand yesterday. That's what they said. Pretty neat. So we're gonna split the sugar up a little bit in here and just, you got your gloves on, right? Yeah. Just gently, gently. Mix it up, and I would like you to throw some flour in here. It looks like, like a 
give give me like what you would think would be a, a, a cup of flour in each one of those. Oh boy. Just eyeball it. Go <laughs> ahead. Eyeball yeah. Anything pops, I'll eat it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Keep so going, keep going, going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Good. Yeah. Very good. That's just about. That's just, I think that's exactly a cup. Take those blueberries and dump them, in dump them in there, please. Blueberries in there. Yeah. We're gonna put some of Smoky House's secret mixture, maple syrup. Anybody not like maple syrup? Good. So we're gonna put this in here. Okay. And gently, 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 Toss that around. Gently mix that up. All right, now we're going to, to divvy up the blueberries between these three pans. Divide up, okay? We want a nice layer of blueberries on the bottom, okay? Of each pan. All right, now we're going to make the topping for the cobbler. I'm going to open up the butter and place it into the bowl and flour. Where's the flour? In here. We're going to put equal amounts of uh, flour. All right, hold on a second. And now, you're going to take that, the butter, and break it into small pieces. When you get it into your hands, kind of yeah, do what Push he's it. doing. Right, just like that. Come on. Keep it going. And knock it all on me. Good. Right. All right, this looks perfect. Hamburgers. All right, just take the beef and put it into the bowl. Okay, now I'm going to throw some eggs in there. Okay, now we're going to add some salt to this. And then we're going to add a little breadcrumb to this. Breadcrumbs coming on the top. Breadcrumbs. This is better than a mixing machine. <laughs> okay, now what we're going to do is just make some patties. What we want to try to do is compress the meat a little bit so it doesn't fall apart on the grill. All right, you guys and girls finish with those uh, hamburgers. Not yet. And we got our chicken marinated right here. That looks good. Marinated in with some soy sauce, Worcestershire, olive oil, herbs and spices. Put a little maple syrup in there. That's going to be the icing on the cake. We're going to start with the coleslaw. So you see how the salt has kind of made this moist. It's drawn out the water and it's made the cabbage a little softer. And now we're going to add some mayonnaise to this. It tastes good. Okay. Oh, and we're going to add some of the vegetables to the pasta salad too. Take this dill and all we want are the very feather, feathery parts. So just pick them off and throw them, throw them into the salad. You got the mustard. Take a knife. Now what we want to do is just take a potato and cut it up a little smaller, okay? And while you're doing that, we're gonna fix the pasta salad. Some olive oil, some vinegar, salt. And we're going to put some fresh basil. You can throw that into the pasta, I mean, the vegetable salad, please. Look at those beautiful vegetables. So we have our vegetable salad, marinated vegetable salad. That looks good. Coleslaw. Delicious. Potato salad. What we want to do is to take the eggs and a knife and just cut them up. All right. The uh, cobbler you can cross off, and the chicken is just about re is ready. You can cross that off. 
All right, we're going to put some celery in the potatoes out. So what we want to do first is see how all these ends are nasty, yeah. you know, a little old. So trim, trim those up. Watch your fingers. Uh, should be here any minute because it's the last thing we have to do. Two dollars fifty cents. Seventeen. Two. Two. <laughs> Can't do the math. I'll bring this down to one fifty. So that's if we buy by fifty, that's three bucks each. I'm I'm Kit Wallace, the interim executive director at Smoky House. Smoky House Center is an extraordinary place. To start with, just look around you. We own. Um, essentially everything you can see from ridgeline to ridgeline. We have um, 5,000 acres here of which 4,500 are under conservation easement, which means that 100 years from now this place will look essentially the same as it looks today. But what's unique about this is that the way that easements are worded is it's not maintained as a pristine nature reserve, but rather it's to be maintained as a working agricultural landscape. We harvest timber in a sustainable way from our forests. We raise, graze livestock on our pastures. We hay our fields and we grow vegetables on the flatlands. In this way, we will help preserve Vermont's heritage of mixed use agriculture, which is so important in this part of the state where development pressures are causing more and more agricultural land to go out of production. The second unique thing about Smoky House is our educational programs. Our flagship program, the Youth Work Program, is now in its 36th year. Under this program, at-risk high school students who are uh, generally not college-bound and universally not well served by traditional schooling, spend their mornings at their sending school doing core academics. In the afternoons, they come to Smoky House and um, spend the afternoon doing work and staying until 4.30, which gives them an extended school day. While they're here, they work in crews of six youth to one adult. What we really offer is work readiness training, helping these kids become um, productive members of society by learning how to work. So in other words, we're not training farmers or loggers. We're teaching these young people the uh, habits and skills and attitudes they need to be productive workers. Things like be on time, come prepared to work, um, listen to instructions, cooperate, these kinds of things. In terms of real work, what they do when they're here is really helping us to maintain the farm and the forest. They do everything from uh, planting, uh, tending, and harvesting our gardens to tending the livestock. They make maple syrup. They make our hardwood charcoal. Um, they plant and raise Christmas trees. They do trail work in the summer, uh, landscaping, carpentry. They get paid for their work, and they get academic credit from their schools. In order to help these kids move toward graduation, we have a really strict no school, no work policy. Um, and because these young people like to be outside, and more importantly, they like to get their weekly paycheck, they do show up and they do move on toward graduation. The second part of our education program is our environmental field studies program, which was begun in 1994 to target middle school students. Here we spark student interest in academics through uh, applied field research, which uh, contributes real-world data to real-world problems. Um, some of their data is used to help us more efficiently manage our farm and our forest, and others is used to contribute to regional, state, and even national um, scientific databases. The students come here for two to really two to four weeks at a time, in groups of six to sixteen, and they spend their entire school day here. Then they get academic credit from their um, schools and return back to their classroom where they uh, enthusiastically, in general, um, present their findings to their friends and their families and their teachers. So that is what's special about Smoky House. We have a spectacularly beautiful place. It's going to be forever um, a working landscape. And we use this landscape to uh, help middle and high school students do applied learning and progress toward graduation and toward um, employment.
Here they come. We're actually going from the other side. When you guys serve hey guys, them, this looks beautiful. serve this, stir it up a little bit occasionally because okay. there's, and then the same thing with this, you see all the liquid on the bottom. This, yes, please. These salads look beautiful, you guys. They look absolutely beautiful. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah. Eight. What's up? Seven meters. Peg. Oh, she needs to be peg. I don't either. I We've spent a successful morning here at Smoky House. The Lime crew did a great job. Yay! Woo! Woo! Gary was his wonderful self. And uh, we thank everybody here. Got a special shout out to Electric Ed, our cameraman, who was beyond the call of duty. And so until next time, keep, keep on, on cooking! cooking. As we were in the process of editing the show, we learned that the board of directors of Smoky House has decided to suspend educational programs. The youth we worked with there were filled with energy and enthusiasm, working and learning on a real farm in a working forest, gaining valuable experience for future employment. Many are also part of the school year youth work program, which helps keep people on a path to graduation. Many of these youth workers are hands-on learners and are not well served by traditional schooling. What will these students do now? Who will keep them from falling through the cracks? While we were filming and cooking, we came to know many of the staff and their deep commitment to these programs. Unfortunately, the entire staff has been let go as of mid-January. The human capital, which had been built up for 36 years of educational programming, is being disassembled and will be very difficult to recreate. The board has cited financial reasons as the basis for their decision, and we are now asking you to do what you can to help. Please email board president Paul Bowyer or the interim administrator John Whalen at the email addresses listed below. Thank you. Out, Mama, it's Danger Man cooking. Oh, 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 oh,